Today we'll be doing something a little different, as we continue with the African History Explained series. I seldom ever dip into mythology or religious stories, though I thought I'd take this opportunity to talk about Shango, the god of thunder, and major deity in the religion of the Yoruba in southwestern Nigeria. He's known also as Sango, Zango, or Chango, depending on who you spoke to. In the Yoruba religion, Shango is known as an Orisha, an Orisha being something of a human version of a spirit that is chosen by the three supreme gods that exist within the doctrine. Essentially, you could say that Shango was once a normal man, but the events in his life would lead him to be chosen by the three supreme gods, granting him powers and turning him into an Orisha. An Orisha's purpose is said to be the guidance of mortals, to ensure the consistent creativity and productivity of mankind, and to teach humanity how best to succeed on Earth. In some versions, Orisha are said to be deities living in the spirit world, whilst in the case of Shango, Orishas are said to be humans, who are then recognised as deities due to extraordinary feats. So what made Shango so extraordinary that he'd be referred to as the God of Thunder? Well, first we should look at what we know about him historically. From a historical standpoint, and I use the term loosely based on the evidence that we actually have, he is said to be the fourth king of the Oyo Empire. He was described as a violent and powerful ruler, who was characterised by anger first and foremost. Oral traditions describe him as having a voice like thunder, and a mouth that spewed fire whenever he spoke. He was said to reign successfully for many years due to his ferocity, where he'd partake in raids, campaigns and a plethora of battles. In some versions of the story, Shango's reign ended when his palace was destroyed by lightning, an ironic destruction for the would-be god of thunder. Some say that by the height of his power, he'd earned the ability to control thunder and lightning, and due to his capriciousness, he inadvertently caused the storm that destroyed his palace. He would also kill his many wives and children, causing him to leave the kingdom in disgrace, only to later kill himself out of grief and shame. It's said that after these events, Shango's enemies would mock his misfortune and laugh at his inability to control his own powers. Following these incidents, storms were said to emerge and lightning raged down upon the empire, destroying parts of it. Those still loyal to Shango claim that this was a result of Shango's wrath and that he was in the heavens now, a vengeful god now watching over them. In another version of this story, Shango would be challenged by an unnamed sorcerer, whose magical talents were so spectacular that the people rallied behind him. Shango was quickly ushered off the throne by the new sorcerer, and like a firstborn child, he was quickly kicked to the side when the second arrived. He was considered a disgrace in the eyes of his people, and despite his tyrannical rule, he was now looked upon as a failure by his former subjects. So Shango left the empire ashamed, and unable to face life any longer, he committed suicide by hanging. Those who were faithful to him however claim that while he had committed suicide, he wasn't dead, but instead had transcended to the heavens on a chain, potentially a symbol for the rope he had used to hang himself with. They claim that his disappearance was not death, and that the three supreme gods had transformed him into an Orisha. The loyal following of Shango were soon able to secure a place for their cult in the religious system of the Oyo Empire, and grew large enough to be considered an integral part of the society. It would spread even further when Oyo became an expansive empire, and would move out to dominate other Yoruba kingdoms, many who would begin to recognise Shango as their deity. Fire and lightning are often associated with Shango, most likely because of his fierce dominance over the Oyo Empire. In Nigeria, he's the most feared in the pantheon of the Orisha, and is known for casting a thunderstone to earth, which creates thunder and lightning, striking any who has offended him. Rocks and debris that are created by lightning strikes are preserved by the Shango worshippers, and are even used at sacred sites in rituals to this day. Despite fire and lightning, the Oshe, a double-headed battle axe, is also associated quite closely with Shango, Many statues of Shango often show the Oshe emerging from his head, insinuating that like a bull, he would go head first into his enemies, showing no fear or hesitation. 
An oshe is also used by the priests in the Shango priesthood, where when dancing, the priests will hold a wooden oshe close to their chests so as to form a spiritual protection, as well as swinging it wide in a high arc to banish bad vibes. Speaking of dance, Shango's worshippers also use bata drums in honour of Shango, who were said to use the same drums to summon storms. Let me know in the comments below what you thought about Shango, and whether you'd like to see more from the Orisha Pantheon. There seems to be nearly 701 deities to cover, so I probably won't get around to all of them, but let me know in the comments below what you'd like to see, as well as any other historical African figures that you'd like to see on the channel. As always guys, don't forget to like this video and hit the subscribe button. Until the next time guys.